Hello and welcome to the first video for the second module on inequalities. Here we're going to be talking about absolute value, so let's jump straight into the definition. I'm going to use piecewise function notation here. If that's not familiar, I'll talk through it. The absolute value of a number, if the number is positive, it does nothing. The absolute value of the number is just the number itself. If the number is negative, the number x is less than zero, then we multiply by negative one, which I write as negative x, and that makes the, ne the negative number positive. So you take a ne negative number, multiply by negative one, it becomes positive. So the absolute value of something, if it's positive, leaves it alone. If it's negative, it just makes it positive. Let's walk through so a couple of examples to make sure this is clear. So any positive number like four, absolute value of four is just itself. Any negative number, we take the negative number, we multiply by a negative, that cancels off a negative, we get positive. So the absolute value of a negative number is the equivalent positive number. Uh, as a special case, the absolute value of zero is zero. And this can apply to whole numbers, but also to irrational numbers and fractions. The absolute value of square root 17 is positive, so square root is just square root 17. And if I have some negative fraction, the same thing applies. I take the negative fraction, I multiply by negative one, and I get the positive fraction. And that's what absolute value does. I want to be able to solve with absolute value, which is a little tricky, because I have to deal with the cases separately of whether the thing inside the absolute value is positive or the thing inside the absolute value is negative. And I don't know beforehand because I'm trying to solve for it. It's an unknown. So I have to deal with both of those possibilities. So if, if star is something in mathematics, a number, a variable, an expression involving numbers and variables, and star shows up in some kind of absolute value, then I deal with it in two cases. In the first case, I assume whatever is inside the absolute value is positive, including zero. And then I can just drop the absolute value and keep going. If it's positive, the absolute value does nothing, so I can ignore it. In the second case, if whatever this thing inside the absolute value is negative, then I need to multiply by negative one, because that's what I do to make negative things positive. So I multiply by negative one, and then I continue to solve. And I have to solve in these two cases. So I have to work with both these cases and look at the results of both cases and put them together to try and finish the thing that I'm trying to solve. Let's look at some examples to see how this works out. First, absolute value of x plus three is seven. So I'm gonna work in two cases. I'm gonna assume the thing inside the absolute value is positive or possibly zero. So that's my first case. And then in that case, I go from the first line to the third line and just drop the absolute value. So in the first case, I can just drop the absolute value. Then I subtract three from both sides of the equation. Um, the threes go away on the left, seven minus three is four, and I get one solution. I should always check that my solution fits my case. So is this a number that's actually in this case? Four plus three is seven, that is larger than zero. So yes, this fits that case. So this is a valid solution for case one. For case two, I'm gonna take the thing inside the absolute value again and assume that it is negative. And then to go from the original expression to the case two expression, instead of the absolute value, I multiply the thing that was in the absolute value by negative one. That's how I make negative, thing, negative things positive. And then I solve, so I can multiply both sides of this by negative one, the negative ones cancel over here, I get negative seven on the right. I can subtract three from both sides, threes cancel on the left, I get x equals negative 10. So that's another solution. And again, I check that that solution fits case two, negative 10 plus three is negative seven. That is a number that is in fact less than zero. So that's a valid, so this is a valid solution for case one. This is a valid solution for case two. There are two numbers that the absolute value of x plus three is equal to seven, four and negative 10. One way of thinking about absolute value, and this is, this is really quite valuable, is to think of absolute value as a measure of distance. When I have the absolute value of a minus b, then that's the distance between two numbers on the number line or on any straight line where I've got units and numbers and notions of distance that make sense. So I can look at this equation, and I can solve it like I did the previous example, but I can also interpret this as what number is x are four units away from 10. Remember, because this is the distance between a and b, so this says the distance between x and 10 is four. 
So this is asking the question, what numbers are four units away from 10? Well, the number six and 14. So I look at 10, I look at four less than it, I get six. I look at four more of it, I get 14. So even without any calculation, I know that the solution to this equation has to be six and 14. And if I do that, absolute value of six minus 10 is the absolute value of negative four is four, that works. 14 minus 10 is four, absolute value is four, that also works. Let me do a couple more examples to make this clear. This equation says the distance from x to 15 is 12. So what numbers are 12 units away from 15? Well, 15 minus 12 is down at three, 15 plus 12 is up at 27. So the answers to this, which I could solve by my two cases, I can directly observe by knowing that absolute value means distance when there's subtraction between it, and say that x equals three and x equals 27 are the two numbers that are 12 units away from 15, 12 to one side and 12 to the other. And I can even do this with positive numbers by thinking of positive numbers as subtracting the negative. So if I have the equation absolute value of x plus seven equals nine, I can write this as the absolute value of x minus negative seven, minus the negative is positive. So now this is now the distance between x and negative seven. So what numbers are nine units away from negative seven? Well, negative seven, if I go nine units to the negative side, I get negative 16. If I go nine units up, I get positive two. So my answer must be negative 16 and two.